Teton Rodriguez turning the tables when it looked like this fight might be getting away from him. Another uppercut breaks through. Then Rodriguez needs to go down to the body, break him down a bit more. Look at Gonzalez fire back. Nice right hand. They promised a show stealer, and this is a terrific round thus far as Teton Rodriguez is having the best round of the fight. Well, you know, Rodriguez is letting his hand go but punches and bunches, and he's actually landing a high volume right now. Gonzalez is a bit fatigued, so he's not slipping and rolling. He's not as quick as he was in the earlier part of the fight. A little bit more stationary in this round. It's a pattern we've seen in his fights in the past, and the opposite pattern... Nice right uppercut for Teton Rodriguez, who tends to come on in the second half of the fight, and right on cue, he is back in this fight. I like to see Rodriguez double that left hook. Good, sharp right hand there from Rodriguez. The chance of Teton here in Monterey, trying to embolden their charge here who has succeeded in turning this fight into a brawl. It's a good round. Okay. Here we take a look back at some of the action from round six. Yeah, they were just bang him right there. Rodriguez definitely getting the better of the exchange. Nice uppercut. You know, in Gonzalez's corner was telling him, don't go to, you know, don't go to war. You're better off boxing. But if you're going to go to war, then go all out. But I think it benefits Gonzalez just to go right back to that jet and trying to find some range. Round seven underway, and Rodriguez getting his wish in terms of how this fight is unfolding. Okay, one thing I noticed in the last round, and I think you really saw it during the replays, one thing we're seeing from Rodriguez, he's almost just lowered his guard a little bit. His, his, his hands are basically beneath his chin, and I think it's just to catch those body shots. Yeah. Gonzalez <laughs> is only aiming there, and he's catching them, rolling with the shots and coming back with hooks. It's working for him. Yep. And he's and he's and he's countering well from the body with the with the guard up at that at that range. Right. Beautiful uppercut again there from Teton Rodriguez and Gonzalez now circling a little bit. Still nice looking hook. mobile and landing on the move there is Israel Gonzalez. High level stuff here from Teton Rodriguez and Higa Gonzalez. If Gonzalez is going to make it a fight, if, if he wants to stay in the inside, he has to catch and counter a lot better because he's trying to row a little too much. And the thing is, he's not, he's not able to see the shots because he's rolling and he's looking down at the ground. You know, I think he's better off just to catch shots and then counter back with the, with the catch and counter. Two good body shots there from Gonzalez. Make it three. It's Rodriguez just standing in there waiting for Gonzalez to pop up and counter with shots like that. Nice left hook from Teton Rodriguez. Another one. Really gave the same pattern, exactly what you're talking yeah. about. He is landing to the body. Gonzalez is rolling well, but when he comes up, he's coming up straight and he's running right into that exactly. left hook. The question is, is he doing enough body work to make up for the shots that he's getting hit with in the eyes of the judges? See, one thing, Gonzalez, he abandoned the jab. And the jab is what, the jabber was helping him win rounds. But he's abandoning the jab, like right there in between. He has the range, throw the jab. But you got to step into the jab. It has to be a hard jab where you can stop Rodriguez in his trap. 
See, Rodriguez, nothing's coming at him where he's just coming, you know, reckless. Not reckless, you know, he's being smart. Three-punch combination there from Gonzalez. The last one landed. Rodriguez fires back with his own left hook to the body. Nice double hook to the body and the head by Rodriguez. Nice hook. Another fun round here between Rodriguez and Gonzalez. And that's really the story of the fight, isn't it, yeah. Gabe? The body work from Gonzalez, those left hook counters that look dangerous from right. Rodriguez. And that's what Rodriguez is doing. You know, he. He wants Gonzalez to throw because he wants to find a hole to throw that counter hook. There it goes. You know, it's a close round. You know, um, I gave the edge a bit to Rodriguez in that round. Round eight begins. These rounds are flying by. This is a tremendous tempo between two high-level fighters that both want to crack at the big names at 115 once again. And even if it isn't a title shot, we went over so many of the big names at 115. There's a lot of opportunity out there in this division. And the winner of this fight would be in a nice position to get one of them. As Gonzalez just continues to stab jab? Rodriguez to the body. That's the jab Gonzalez needs to stick to. It's a hard jab. You know, it stops, Rod it stops Rodriguez in his track. But when he's giving that pitter batter jab, you know, Rodriguez doesn't respect that and he's just coming at him. Because the advantage is for Rodriguez to keep applying pressure. Good left hook there from Rodriguez. Gonzalez again with a two punch combination downstairs. See, right there in between, Gonzalez should be popping that jab putting steam on it. A reminder that after four rounds, two judges had this fight even. One judge had Gonzalez up 39-37. So perhaps that's a little lens into what these judges like. In the early rounds, we thought that Gonzalez was doing extremely well. He was in his flow, he had a nice rhythm. But there were big shots here and there from Rodriguez. Yeah. There are more of them as the rounds have gone on. So you have to wonder if those two judges, if they've been scoring these rounds for Rodriguez. You won't see too many fighters explicitly target the body the way that Israel Gonzalez is here tonight. I'd have to say that 80% of what he's throwing yeah. is to the body right now. I, I don't think I'm exaggerating. And it's smart because Rodriguez is tired. You can see it. You know, the volume went down. He's kind of taking a break, catching his breath. And right here, Gonzalez has to take advantage of that. He doesn't have to throw nothing hard. Just keep jabbing, keep jabbing, stick to the body. The volume has always been the hallmark of Ahiga Gonzalez. And if Rodriguez nice right is giving him these gaps, he could fill it with shots like that. Just a quick right hand up top, and another one. Nice. See, this is the tempo that Gonzalez wants. Continue dictating the pace with the jab. Nice jab. These are also the opportunities that, that body work can open up. Rodriguez probably not thinking about the shots up top at all. But he got hit with two good ones in the closing 20 nice seconds job. of this round. It's a good round. Okay. 
terrific round for Israel Gonzalez as we take a look back at the action from round eight. Nice body shot. That was a good counter. Rodriguez, uh, his corner wasn't happy with him kind of lowering down the volume of punches. He felt he wasn't busy enough. As round nine began, so it was very evident that the volume dipped from Teton Rodriguez. Round off for Teton in that one. And Israel Gonzalez more than happy to box around him and continue to stab away to the body time after time like that. You know, it's a close fight. I think whoever wins these next two rounds wins the fight. Fatigue certainly becoming a factor here as we enter the later rounds, but Israel Gonzalez tends to hold camp in Tomoya at altitude where he trains. Rodriguez, as we mentioned, stations his camp here in Monterey. Plenty of mountains, not at altitude quite the same way as where Israel Gonzalez trains. Not that that's some magic pill, but Gabe, obviously fighters go and train at altitude for, for a reason. Absolutely. It's good for recovery as well. All right, we are just handed the scorecards from the WBC official right now. The first judge has Gonzalez ahead 77-75. The second judge has it a draw. The third judge has Jonathan Rodriguez ahead right now. So right now, this fight is entirely up in the air. But it would mean that if Gonzalez were to win the next two rounds on two judges' scorecards, he would walk away victorious here tonight. The same can be said for Jonathan Rodriguez, who again is ahead by two points on one judge's scorecard. So the fight hanging in the balance here in rounds nine and ten. Good exchange there on the inside. Right hands from both men getting through. Nice left hook. You can hear the sound of that one from Teton Rodriguez. You know, and that left hook came because Rod Gonzalez threw that right to the body too slow. It's too, it's too late in the fight to be throwing that right hand to the body lazy. Gonzalez in those exchanges looking like maybe he's starting to tire a little bit, standing up a little straighter on the inside. So he has been throwing a ton of punches in this fight. It would be understandable if that's the case. But again, these men need these last two rounds if they want to be victorious here tonight. As the seconds tick away here in round nine, a nail biter here in Monterey. The tenth and final round of what has been a terrific crossroads battle between Teton Rodriguez and Higa Gonzalez. And just a reminder that after eight rounds, both men had a lead, a two-point lead on one judge's scorecards. The third judge had it a draw. So the result of this round 
is in all likelihood going to determine this fight. And they are going at it chest to chest here in the center of the ring. Yeah, in the corner, both fighters said, put it all out. You know, I think whoever wins this round wins the fight. Look at this action on the inside. Rodriguez snaps the head back of Gonzalez with an uppercut. That was but a it's an good uppercut, uppercut to the body Gonzalez. from Gonzalez. Woo! Made us some big shots. Gonzalez has to get his footing together. You know, he's he's not he's not able to get anything on his shots if he's just kind of off balance. He's throwing, but there's nothing on the shots because he's off balance right now. Rodriguez missing over the top. That left hook raises the head of Gonzalez. A chance of Teton coming out once again. The Monterey fans trying to rally Teton Rodriguez to a victory here tonight and propel him to a big opportunity against one of the many big names at 115, but Israel Gonzalez wants a fifth crack at a world title, and he has fought like it all night long. Gonzalez is landing some good shots as well. Because he's sitting on the shots now. Vicious exchanges here in the 10th and final round as we enter the final minute of this contest. Teton Rodriguez thought he would be facing Chihuahua Rodriguez here tonight. But after negotiations fell through, in stepped Israel Gonzalez. Nice and has Gonzalez pulled off what may be considered a minor upset given the circumstances. What have the judges seen? in these final three minutes. We know what we've seen. Wow, that was a good body shot by Gonzalez. I think Rodriguez got hurt. We've seen tremendous action from start to finish. And it might be Gonzalez who has the last word with that body shot and another uppercut. What a fight. You know, you got what you wanted from both fighters. Their corners wanted it all, and that's what they gave them. Well, they said that they would steal the show here tonight, and that may very well be the case. There's a lot for the next two fights to live up to after that one. That was just high-level stuff from start to finish. You know, I don't like to see draws, but if this fight's a draw, you know, I'm not mad at it. That last round, I really don't know how to call it. Well, up to the eighth round, uh, neither did the official judges. They're <laughs> all over the place. Again, yeah. one a draw, and then each of the other two judges had Rodriguez and Gonzalez respectively up by two rounds. As we take a look back at the highlights of what was a tremendous battle here between Rodriguez and Gonzalez. You know, both guys had their rounds. It was back and forth. Very, very close fight. I wouldn't want to be a judge. There are three judges that are tasked with rendering the decision here tonight. Alejandro Camacho, he had Israel Gonzalez ahead after eight. Moises Melhem had this a draw after eight. And Abigail Sandoval had Rodriguez ahead after eight. So we'll do some boxing math and figure out who is victorious here tonight. Israel Gonzalez 
He's had plenty of hard luck in his career, so many opportunities at a world title. Hoping that he gets lucky on the scorecards here tonight. It's a close one. Let's see who was victorious as we send it back up to David Diamante. Damas y caballeros, después de esos saltos aquí en Monterrey, vámonos a la decisión de los jueces. Moisés Melem, 96-94, González. Sandoval, 96-94, Rodríguez. Y Alejandro Camacho scores this contest. 95-95, we have a split draw. Empate. The both fighters <laughs> waiting for verification there, but ultimately the scorecards remain in the manner they were after eight. You know, I'm not mad at the scorecard. No. It was, it was that kind of fight. Rodriguez had his moments, Gonzalez had his moments. And then the end, the last two rounds, you know, they just kind of, it, it was hard to call because they kept, it was back and forth. It was great. It was great action. Well, and, and I do think, uh, I agree, that I think a, a draw is likely fair in this one. It'll be tough to swallow if you're Israel Gonzalez because you're probably thinking, I was so much busier most of the fight. How was I not given the, how was I not given the decision? And that's tough to cope with. I mean, you've been on the, on the wrong end of yeah. some dodgy decisions yourself. For sure. You know, it's just, uh, you never know what a judge wants. You know, some judge might, you know, they like the, the jab, the jab and the movement from Gonzalez. As we take a look back at the highlights from this one. Yeah, right there in the inside, you know, I always thought that um, that was good body work by Gonzalez. Good counter by Rodriguez. each and every round tremendous action and, and the question coming into this one was which of these fighters will kind of graduate to a bigger opportunity after the draw i mean either you do the rematch or i would say that either of these guys are very deserving of facing some of those big names the big names they have to keep busy they have to fight someone and it's not always one another absolutely you know i think i think these guys put on a good performance and they can just move on to maybe fighting one of the title holders you know, they definitely put on a good performance. A tremendous fight from Jonathan Rodriguez and Israel Gonzalez. And we'll be back with more here in Monterey in just a few moments. The crowd going crazy. Then they're on knockout. Bang. Oh, and here comes the bomb. What a performance from one of boxing's oh. This fight is going to show the world everything. Alicia, the bomb bomb gardener. July 15th, the fans will get a taste of what I've been wanting for a very long time. This is what I've been waiting for. Israel, Jonathan, it was war. Tell me, Israel, do you think you did enough to win this fight tonight? Obviamente, una guerra esta noche. Israel, piensas que hiciste suficiente para ganar la pelea esta noche? Pues, eh, creo que hicimos un buen trabajo. Este, me siento satisfecho con el trabajo que hicimos. Creo que eh, un empate en, en su casa quiere decir mucho. Eh, él también es un guerrero. Un, un, pensé que, que iba a estar más fácil la pelea, eh, pero estuvo muy complicada y, y creo que estuvo muy buena la pelea y el, el, el público fue el que disfrutó. No, so I think, you know, it was, I think we've done some good work tonight. You know, I think a draw in his kind of home is, is tells you a lot. You know, I think we worked really hard. It was, you know, I thought it was a harder fight than expected. You know, so I think it's a good result. Jonathan, you two went to war. You know, it was a great fight. We're looking for a rematch. How soon do you think that could happen for you? Sí. 
¿Quieres la revancha y qué tan fácil podemos hacer? ¿Qué tan rápido podemos hacer esta revancha? No, sí, la verdad, una excelente pelea, un gran rival, un duro. Eh, eh, ya sabíamos que íbamos a dar una guerra hoy, el día de hoy, porque es un gran peleador, aguanta bastante, pero yo creo que también di el ancho, di una excelente pelea y sin duda una revancha, me encantaría, ya sea en, en su casa, ahora en su casa, en el lugar que sea, sin duda va a ser una excelente pelea porque vamos a llegar mejor preparados. Also, I think, you know, it was an excellent fight. We had a really tough opponent there. You know, caught him with some shots, some hooks, but he really put up with a lot of shots. You know, I'm happy to take the rematch, whether it is, whether it's in his hometown or wherever, I'm happy to do it again. Israel, it was a great fight. We know you've already had your world title shots. How do you think that experience has helped you tonight? Sí, obviamente fue una gran pelea. Has tenido la experiencia de pelear por un título mundial. ¿Cuánto te ayudó esta experiencia en esta pelea esta noche? No, pues creo que Titán también es un peleador de clase mundial. Eh, creo que, que eso venía sobrando la experiencia. Él también es un muchacho que tiene mucha experiencia y como te repito, es un, pesea, un peleador de clase mundial. No, I think it helped me a great deal. You know, I faced a world class fighter here. I've got experience, but he's also got experience. As I've said before, I think I faced a world class fighter here. Jonathan, you too. You've already been in a world title shot. Tell me how that experience has helped you tonight. Obviamente también has estado en un, un título, una pelea por título mundial. ¿Cuánto también te ayuda esa experiencia esta noche? No, sí, fue, fue una gran experiencia. Aprendimos bastante. Aprendimos bastante. Y la verdad, fue una, una gran pelea con Ancagas que, que me ayudó bastante para enfrentar a un gran rival como Israel González. La verdad, súper durísimo. Un gusto haberlo, haberlo enfrentado. A partir de lo que considero un gran amigo, un gran boxeador y tiene todo mi respeto. So, yeah, I think that experience helped me a great deal. You know, uh, he's, I helped out me to face a world class opponent like him. It was a pleasure to face him, you know, he's a friend, you know, and I really appreciate him taking this fight. Thank you guys for going back ringside to you. Thank you so much, Sofia. Very heartwarming to see the friendship blossom between Rodriguez and Gonzalez, but still to come, two excellent young fighters here in Monterey, the top of the bill. See super middleweight sensation Diego Pacheco out to impress once again as he climbs through the ropes looking for win number 19 to move closer to challenging for a world title. But up next, it is the super featherweight sensation Rocky Hernandez with a brand new matchroom contract who's looking to cement his status as the leading contender for a shot at the 130 pound world champions. 30 knockouts since turning pro back in 2014. Rocky Hernandez is coming up right after our break. Boxing on the zone, sponsored by William Hill. This is my week with Peloton. Take a few nice deep breaths. Have you been there? Been places no one should go. If you've been there, then you know. There's no such thing as solo. Wherever you go, we go. Every step, every wall, every climb. We always have your back. This is going to be the greatest comeback. Let's keep it up. Let's take it up another level. More urgency. It's just like nothing else. Me again. Allow me to pick up where I left off. The biggest phenomenon. Oh my God. You do not scare me. You know you were not a friend. They can get it in a flash, no, sir. Cause when I switch, then they wanna say that I'm a... You're not listening. I'm not listening. 
Google Pixel, proud partner of the England teams. F-Pace. Intuitive technology, intelligent all-wheel drive and the performance of a Jaguar. Search F-Pace. At William Hill, we get the value of football. The value of the players. The value of the win. It's never gonna happen, you need more goals. The value of your best. This season, we're giving you our best value ever with William Hill's epic value. So, whether it's Acker Freedom, three or four, or epic odds, we've got you covered. Real value, week in, week out. This is epic! It's who you play with. William Hill. Boxing on the Zone. Sponsored by William Hill. Welcome back to Monterey, where Mexico's 25-year-old knockout artist, Eduardo Rocky Hernandez, is up next as he takes on Tijuana's Hector Garcia. Hernandez's only setback came in 2019, but the man they call Rocky has recovered. He's rebuilt from that first round defeat, and with five inside the distance victories, which have put him back on course for a shot at a world title. Thank you. Pues lo que significa para mí es, es un nuevo comienzo. Eh, muy contento de estar aquí con el equipo de Macho. Y pues muy comprometido con, con, con el equipo de Rocky Hernández para demostrar que vengo bien preparado, que vengo a ganar y que vengo a hacer, a hacer historia. No venimos este, confiados, venimos seguros del trabajo que se hizo y voy a ganar. Voy a, a, tengo la responsabilidad de, de ganar por, por, mi, por mi familia. Somos número uno del Consejo Mundial de Boxeo. Eh, creo que la oportunidad ya nada más es que toquemos la puerta y ya se nos, se nos abra. Y, pero antes de eso está la pelea del día viernes. Eh, primero me enfoco en esta pelea que es contra Héctor, Héctor García y después contra, contra Shaki Foster. Pues yo coordina, eh, también está en la mira, pues están a 130 libras y cualquier peleador que tenga un cinturón en la 130 voy a, voy a hacer la mano. Damas y caballeros de Monterrey, Nuevo León, México, en vivo por The Zone. Estamos listos para semi-estelar combate de la noche. Bienvenido, por favor, Héctor García. Well, quite often for fighters in this sport, the biggest opportunities come when you least expect them, as is the case for Hector Garcia here tonight. Garcia thought he would be fighting on a club show in just a few weeks at Ev Evolution Club in Tijuana against journeyman Ulysses Perez. But after Jonaker Tovar was forced to pull out of this fight, a call came through for Garcia to step in. Garcia had to expedite his weight cutting process quite a bit, but was able to strike a compromise with Hernandez's camp for a 137 pound limit. The 28 year old is riding a six fight win streak coming into this fight and looks to shock the boxing world with an upset to make it seven in a row in Monterey. And now entering the arena, Eduardo Rocky Hernandez. One of the most explosive knockout punchers in the sport. Just about the only thing that can slow Rocky Hernandez's tempo is promotional problems. Hernandez said that he was stuck in a contract with Disrupt Promotions and unable to book a fight, causing a layoff of roughly 10 months. But the day after he was released from his contract, he signed a new one with Matchroom, 
under whom the two most recent and perhaps most impressive performances of his career have been. So now, Hernandez feels that he is one fight away from a world title opportunity, perhaps against Oshaki Foster, as he looks to fulfill the promise that he established early in his career when he was considered one of the sport's top prospects. Damas y caballeros, desde Tierra Regi a Monterrey, Nueva León, México, en vivo por The Zone, estamos listos para semi estelar combate de la noche. Presentado por Señor Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing en asociación con Box Stars. This bout is sponsored by Bet Online and Stagefront. Introducing your three judges scoring this contest from ringside. Eliezer Luna, Moises Melum, and Pablo Teran. And at the sound of the bell, your third man in the ring, referee Sergio Hernandez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 10 rounds of boxing scheduled in the lightweight division. Diaz Asaltos, Peso Ligero. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he was the black and gold. He scaled 137 pounds. Peso 137 libras. His professional record, 20 victories, 7 defeats, 4 draws, with 13 wins coming by way of knockout. Presentando de Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, Hector Guadaña Garcia. Garcia. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner. He wears it the red, white, and green. He also scaled at already 137 pounds. Peso 137 también. His professional record, 33 victories. Only one defeat with 30 big wins coming by way of knockout. Peleando fuera tras la pantla, Estado de México. Here is the reigning and undefeated WBC International Silver Super Featherweight Champion, Rocky Hernandez. Hernandez. Señores, instrucciones, ya saben, pelea limpia, no cabezazos, no golpes en la nuca, no golpes bajos. Cuando se amarren a la bomba de fuera, se separan sin soltar golpes, pero la guardia siempre arriba. Choca los guantes, suelta los dos. So Rocky Hernandez back in action for the first time since last September when he scored a vicious TKO victory over Jorge Mata on the undercard of Estrada Cortez. Back in action here tonight against the late replacement Hector Garcia, who took this fight on less than a week's notice. As we mentioned, a compromise made in terms of the weight. Of course, Hernandez, a 130-pound contender, agreed for a limit of 137 here tonight. Garcia asked for a couple of weights, allegedly a little bit higher. But Rodriguez, excuse me, Hernandez, and his team demanded that it be at least 137. Hernandez already with that dangerous looking left hook. He has scored some violent knockouts with that shot and with the right hand as well. A lot on the line for Hernandez here tonight. The thought is that potentially he could be moved into a world title fight next time out. He has to be victorious here tonight, has to come out of this unscathed. Nice lands up. a nice right hand and an uppercut. He's swinging. <laughs> He's definitely going for the knockout. Hernandez isn't uh, giving us the idea that he's looking to knock off ring rust here tonight. He's looking to knock Garcia out here in the opening round. See that from Garcia. That's kind of his game. He likes to dip low, go to the body, and then come up the middle with uppercuts. Tried a nice little feint right there. Painted the right hand through a left hook. Garcia did. In 2020, Garcia 
gave Joseph Adorno some problems. Fought to a draw with Adorno, who's still a very good fighter, still a rising prospect. So Garcia on the right night can certainly cause problems. hear the power from Hernandez, even on those short shots on the inside. They trade hooks. You know, props to Garcia, though, because he's, uh, he's putting on a nice little fight. On a one-week notice, you know, against a guy with 30 knockouts. Yeah, already showing a willingness to stand yeah. in there and trade. Ooh. He gets hit with a nice got, uppercut there. He's getting caught with good shots, too, but he's coming forward. Nice right hand by Hernandez. There's that uppercut right behind it again. Hernandez just oh, throwing everything Garcia with just, heat, but yeah, he got Garcia caught with a left hook. a good, nice hook. Oh, that, that, that shot did affect Garcia. He's behind the ear a bit. Good action in our opening round. Most of it from Hernandez, but flashes of danger from Hector Garcia. Back at some of the action from the opening round. There's one of those left hooks from Rocky Hernandez. You know, and, and Hernandez, uh, he has power, but it's, he has good speed behind that power. Nice quick little right hand, right uppercut. Round two begins. I don't think uh, Garcia recovered from that that big uh, shot that closed the round, the first round. Yeah, he was complaining that it was behind the head. The referee didn't could, seem to agree, but all the same, yeah. you could still be affected by those shots, whether yeah, it, it was, was legal or not. It was an equilibrium shot. It's right by the ear. It was hard to recover from those shots, shake the legs up. Step in behind a big right hand. You know, one thing about Hernandez is he has good punching power, obviously. But there's no combination. It's just one shot at a time. Even though he has good accuracy, and he's picking a, he's picking a shot smartly. But I like to see combinations. Left hook on the inside there from Hector Garcia. Back in 2017, Hector Garcia fought Devin Haney in a fight that has prompted some conspiracy theories from Roly Romero and others on boxing Twitter. Ooh. You see it dropping Man, a decision a right in that hand. one. And that was a nice right hand there from Hernandez. Lanzi. Cut. You know, a fighter should always be in shape and should always be ready. But, you know, Garcia, a, a one-week notice, uh, it's really short. But uh, I like what I see so far. You know, he's come, came to win. He didn't come to lay down. So Garcia, as we mentioned, was in preparation for a fight in a couple of weeks, albeit not one of this caliber. It's a big leap from Ulysses Perez to Rocky Hernandez, but still in training, was in the middle of a weight cut. Was able to get down to an appropriate weight for this fight. The biggest opportunity of his career. Snapping jab there from Hernandez. And indeed, they are all one at a time yeah. from Rocky, but everything is heavy. Even the jab is a heavy shot. Yeah. And you know, I just like to see, um, I like to see Garcia just walk him down with the with the hands up, you know, protect himself from the big shots and just kind of start touching the body a bit. Good oh. counter shot there from Hernandez, and Garcia's in trouble already. Ooh, Hernandez Man, just bombs guy. away with that right hand. Oh. And here are the combinations. Oh, man, Garcia got a 
position. Big shots. Most of this landing, the left eye of Garcia busted wide open right now. And how did he survive that onslaught? He is still unsteady right now. Man. He needs assistance. Discover the new way to your new Mercedes-Benz. No matter where or when you buy it. Online or in store. Choose your car and there's just one price. Plus, extended test drives are now available across our electric car range. Search Mercedes-Benz online showroom and book your electric extended test drive today. Fernandez's manager, Hector Fernandez, also acting as his cut man here tonight. And I'm sure if you're Hector, you're thinking, hey, we can get this one Ooh. over with right now and move on to oh, a world man. title shot. That Garcia is oh, Beautiful out of it. left hook. Ooh. Garcia in a world He's of, out of trouble. It. He's out of it. He's out on his feet. Ruff can stop the fight anytime right now. He's... How in the world is Garcia oh, on his man. feet right now? Oh, the Ruff can stop the fight. That oh, is man. it. As Garcia crumples into the arms of the referee, and Rocky Hernandez just stamped his ticket for a world title shot. Man, you know. Well, that is, that's I, a different asked, level of power. I asked for punches and bunches, and, <laughs> and, he, and he gave it to me. Like, that was crazy. Speed, power. Man, Hernandez shows some really great skills right there. And look at this, Rocky Hernandez going and getting the stool himself Make for the opponent that good. he just knocked out. That is a, a heartwarming moment. Good sportsmanship. Rocky Hernandez, I'm sure, appreciative of Hector Garcia stepping in and saving this date for him as well. <laughs> then he has to go out and knock him out, you but know, now showing his appreciation. The 135 pound division is loaded, and we just saw we just saw Hernandez added to the list of that. In this, uh, looking forward to seeing more of him. Well, and remember, this is Hernandez basically fighting up in weight. He wants to challenge for a title at 130. So imagine what that power feels like at 130. This is a dangerous man as we take a look back at how this one ended. Man, he's so dangerous, man. And the speed is like it's sneaky speed. You know, he's, he's nice and calm. And the next thing you know, he's just explosive. And look at that, the accuracy, it's not just the explosive and the speed, but it's the accuracy. It's not every shot is landing. Yeah, it might look like he's winging these shots, yeah, but they're all landing. on target. He uppercuts, overhand rights, left hooks. Man, look at that. Short six-inch punch. Look, guard up, blocking the shots, counter left hook. That's beautiful. Man, that was really good. That is exactly how you draw it up. And you know, during Hernandez's entrance, I described him as, as one of the best pure knockout punchers in the sport. And this is what I'm referring yeah. to. This is a man whose plan A, B, and C is to knock you out. Yeah. And pretty much every time out, with very few exceptions throughout his <laughs> career, it has been successful. You know, most of the time power punchers are kind of tight, right? But this guy's explosive. And every shot is a hard shot. Every, 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 every shot is lethal. Man, that was great. Whew. Look at that shot. Over. And how oh, in man. the world? That's nasty. <laughs> wow. That's nasty. A nasty knockout <laughs> from Rocky Hernandez. And we can't wait to see what he can do against the big dogs at 130. Ready to make this one official. Let's send it up to David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Sergio Hernandez goes a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage 
25 seconds of round number three, declaring your winner by knockout, Eduardo Rocky Hernandez. The Rocky Hernandez with yet another knockout victory. New contract, same result as he now celebrates with his baby daughter, and certainly that is what it's all about for Rocky Hernandez, who just a few years ago thought about walking away from the sport. He said he wasn't getting opportunities, he wasn't making enough money, he thought he'd find a new job and just move on, and thank God he didn't, because this is a man who has some special power in Abs both hands, game. Absolutely, man. He's a killer. He's a killer, you know, he's poised. Man, but when it's time to get you out of there, he's, he's definitely a finisher. I'm sure we'll be hearing more from Rocky in uh, just a few moments as he speaks to Sofia Gutierrez, but yeah, you hear it right there. Hernandez calling out Oshaki Foster. Apparently there have been preliminary discussions between those two teams for that fight next before the end of the year. And certainly we would love to see that. What a blend of pure boxing talent in Foster and raw knockout ability from Rocky Hernandez. That is one to circle on your calendar when it gets booked. Another knockout win for Rocky Hernandez. And as he continues to celebrate, just a reminder that we have more boxing action coming your way from the UK next week. A win will put Kelly within touching distance of a shot at the world title. Oh, nice right hand there for Kelly. The unbeaten Corzo will be a tricky opponent for the Brit. It's all going down in Newcastle. You don't want to miss this one. So much coming up on DAZN in the coming weeks. Tomorrow night from Texas, Floyd Schofield gets an unexpected main event slot. We'll tune in for that. Alicia Baumgartner rematching Christina Linardadu in Motown next weekend. And of course, on DAZN pay-per-view Saturday, August 5th, it is Jake Paul taking on Nate Diaz and just announced yesterday Saturday, August 12th, Anthony Joshua and Dillian White will rematch in the United Kingdom. That one should be explosive. And speaking of explosiveness, knockout punchers don't get too much better than the man who is standing by with our Sofia Gutierrez. Rocky, that was a great win, third round knockout, and it was your matchroom debut. Tell me, what do you think about your performance tonight? Sí, fue un knockout increíble en el tercer round. Encima era tu debut con matchroom. Cuéntanos un poco las emociones que tienes ahora mismo. No, pues muy contento. Eh, sabíamos a lo que veníamos a trabajar fuerte. Bueno, veníamos de un trabajo, de un trabajo fuerte, y me siento muy contento del resultado. Eh, más que nada, pues están aquí eh, Eddie Hearn, Kevin Rooney y todo el equipo de trabajo de matchroom. Y pues la verdad la victoria es para toda la gente, toda la afición que me está viendo. Y pues principalmente para estos dos niños, que es el son del amor de mi vida, mi hija Grecia y mi hijo Kenai. So you know, first and foremost, obviously we work really hard and this is the result that we want. And more than anything, I'm delighted the fact that Eddie Hearn's here and all the help that I've had from the matchroom team, Kevin Rooney. And this one's for the fans as well, you know, but this really is truly for my two daughters that are here with me. This victory is helping you get to that world title shot. Tell me, is there anyone that you have your eyes set on? Yes, so this is, you know, a great uh, victory for me. It brings me closer to that world title shot. You know, I'm number one with the WBC, so I'm really close to getting my hands on being a, a world title champion for the first time. Great win tonight, Rocky. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you so much, Sophia. Our top of the bill is coming up next with one of the 
hottest young contenders in the sport back in action. That's California's Diego Pacheco, who since turning pro back in 2018 has won all of his 18 fights. The 22-year-old is quickly closing in on all the big guns in the 168-pound division. But tonight, Pacheco faces his toughest test yet in Manuel Gallegos. Only one defeat for the fighter ranked just behind the only, the one and only Canelo Alvarez out here in Mexico. In terms of the 168 pound division, Gallegos looking to upset the odds and throw his own name into the title mix. Pacheco Gallegos is our top of the bill and it is coming up live from Monterey, Mexico. Two young fighters hungry for success and with 31 knockout victories between them, this is a contest you don't want to miss. We'll be right back after this. Boxing on the Zone, sponsored by William Hill. Google Pixel, proud partner of the England teams. The award-winning all-electric Jaguar I-Pace. with fast charging technology and a range of up to 292 miles. Search iPace. Have you been there? Been places no one should go. If you've been there, then you know. There's no such thing as solo. Wherever you go, we go. Every step, every wall, every climb, we always have your back. It's just like nothing else. At William Hill, we get the value of football. The value of the players. The value of the win. It's never gonna happen, you need more goals. The value of your bet. This season, we're giving you our best value ever with William Hill's epic value. So, whether it's Acker Freedom, three or four, or epic odds, we've got you covered. Real value, week in, week out. This is epic! It's who you play with, William Hill. Boxing on the Zone, sponsored by William Hill. Up next, but next month, a surprise announcement just yesterday. It is the return of Anthony Joshua as he heads in to a rematch that is eight years in the making. Great British rivalries. Does anyone do it better? 
flickering away in the darkness, the fire never truly dies. Waiting for the perfect moment to reignite. Things that is some sort of mystery, man. I knocked you out clean. In the battleground of the O2 Arena, two of heavyweight boxing's biggest names will meet again for one last dance. One final deal. Emotions are clearing. Anthony Joshua. The return to London. Dylan White. He's built to the bigger page. Two men with history. A history of victory. A history of of revenge, Redemption. a history of pain, the Whoa. most shocking turnaround, a history of violence. Anthony Joshua versus Dylan White 2, August the 12th, live only on The Zone. Yes, as we know, it was just announced that Anthony Joshua is going to be facing Dylan White in just four weeks. The first time they faced each other in the ring was nearly eight years ago. Now, how hard was it to set up the fight with four weeks' notice? Yeah, you know, this is a risky fight. I mean, I can't believe Anthony Joshua has accepted this fight. We've got the Deontay Wilder fight locked in for December. This was the one he wanted. He wanted a fight that was going to motivate himself. He wanted a fight that he could get out for. He's working hard in Dallas. The press conference is on Monday. We did a pre-sale today. It was one of the fastest selling pre-sales in the history of the O2 Arena. It's going to be a massive night for boxing August 12th at the O2. And will it be as good as the first fight? I think so. You know, I think yeah, that was a long time ago. There's so much on the line. Both guys were a little bit naive then. Now they're talking about their careers. They're talking about world title ambitions. It's absolute must win for both. And that was a massive announcement. Is there anything else we can expect in the second half of this year? Oh, I mean, you know, me and the team, I hate talking too much because I always give everything away. We're talking Wood Warrington. Obviously, we've got Sonny Edwards against Martinez, Taylor Cameron. I've just been speaking to Devin Haney about this Regis Pro Grade fight. I want to get that over the line. So much more to come. Joe Cordina defending his championships. We're looking to announce maybe next week or in the next 10 days the entire slate, probably from August all the way to December. All right, and we just saw Rocky Hernandez in the ring. What did you think about his performance? I mean, this guy is so exciting. I mean, I believe we have the best 130 pounder in the world in Joe Cordina. We also have two absolute beasts in Sugar Nunes and Eduardo Hernandez. I want to make Eduardo Hernandez against Shaquille O'Foster, uh, O'Shaki Foster. I think it's a tremendous fight. Joe Caldina is looking at the unifications as well. But these guys are ready. They are hungry. And they're two very dangerous guys in the 130th pound division. And next up, we have Diego Pacheco, the undefeated fighter from South Central. What can we expect to see from him tonight? I think it's a dangerous fight. I mean, look, they're two very tall, uh, very powerful 168 pounders. Um, there's a lot of hype around Diego Pacheco. But these Mexican shows are a little bit different to what he's used to. I just spoke to him backstage. Just stay neat with your work, use your fundamentals, be smart in there. Sometimes this hype can sometimes allow these young fighters to get carried away. But Diego seems to have a great head on his shoulders. And this is a real prospect at 168 pounds. He already wants to fight the likes of Belanga, Munguia. And you, know, you look at other guys beyond him. Um, Benavidez, obviously Canelo Alvarez. This is a guy I believe will mix it at world level. But I don't want to put too much pressure on. We're about to see in here. But I think this is a young man that's going to go all the way. And it's been an exciting night so far. What does the future for matchroom boxing look like in Mexico? I think uh, we just have so much fun here. You know, all these guys, you look at the fighters we're unearthing in Mexico. Mauricio Lara, Sugar Nunes, Eduardo Hernandez. Um, there's so much talent coming here. Angel Fierro, who's here as well. And, you know, to bring Diego Pacheco, don't forget, he just headlined in the UK against a British fighter. Now he's headlining in Mexico against a Mexican fighter. If he's triumphant here tonight, he'll headline in Los Angeles. It's been a great development for him, and the Mexican fighters always come to fight. And Gallegos will as well. It's going to be a dangerous night. Awesome. Well, thank you for chatting with me, Eddie. We have Diego, so let's check it out. Back to you guys. Fights, 15 knockouts, looking like a real, real star. I'm gonna believe this guy Pacheco has proved that he's great. We're dealing with a really impressive, gifted fighter in Diego Pacheco. My job is to come here and put on a great performance every single time I step in the ring. The future of boxing, beautifully poised to do massive things in the sport. I believe you're gonna see this young man ruling the 168 pound division in years to come. Under severe pressure here. Spiteful, hurtful stuff. Biggest step up. Biggest victory of his young career. Clinical finishing ability. Down he goes! 
So sharp, so accurate. Future world champion. That's what Diego Pacheco is. When you put yourself out to be one of the best, you have guys wanting to take that spot. I knew that since day one, and I only expect it to keep going. As a superstar, been born. Well, it is main event time here in Monterey between two fighters with similar looking records, similar builds as well. Manuel Gallegos returned to action earlier this year with an exciting draw against another unbeaten American prospect in Richard Van Sicklin. With the ring rust blown off, Gallegos will be the latest fighter to try and halt the unbeaten Diego Pacheco's rise to the top. It's an unbeaten journey for the LA native, which started back in 2018, and one which Pacheco expects will take him all the way to a world title. Mexico, it, those are my roots. Those are my parents are from. That's where they were born and raised. So um, coming here and fighting in Mexico, it means a lot. Putting on great shows for my Mexican people and, and everyone back home supports me and is Mexican as well. You know, they love to see me come down here and represent. You know, I have my little brother on my undercard and, uh, you know, we've been together every single day since we started boxing. You know, we dreamt of one day fighting in the same card together and, and now it's happening here in Monterrey and we're super, super excited. You know, when we found out we we're going to be fighting together, it was, we were both super happy and it motivated us a lot to, to make sure we look good when we, when we perform together. You know, Benavidez Sr., he's, he's been in some, some really big fights. You know, he's um, took his, his, both of his sons to become world champions, and I feel that's where he's taking me now, to the bigger fights. I know that world title shot is going to come in the near future. Just got to keep doing what I've been doing, staying focused and, and working hard. Berlanga is a good fighter. Um, I know I'm, I'm a lot better than he is, and whenever the time is right for that fight to happen, then it'll be a, it'll be a good fight, and the, the, everyone, the whole world will enjoy it. Monterrey, Nuevo Leon, Mexico. This is the moment of truth, and there's no turning back. Set to make his ring walk, please welcome Manuel Meno Gallegos. Well, every fighter contains multitudes, differences between their in-ring persona and their temperament outside of it, but few are as stark in contrast as in Manuel Gallegos. Outside of the ring, he's a veterinarian and a zoo technician, taking care of animals both small and large. But inside the ring, he's focused on destruction, an all-out pressure fighter who relies on volume, power, and a rock-solid chin to wear opponents out. Gallegos is coming off an exciting draw against Richard Van Sicklin earlier this year and is finally getting a crack at one of the more recognizable names that he's been asking for over the past two years. Ranked number 12 by the WBO presently, Gallegos says, I hope Pacheco is prepared to fight for his life tonight because I'm coming to take everything he's got. And now entering the arena, the undefeated Diego Pacheco. One of Matchroom's first signees upon its venture to America, Diego Pacheco, has thus far fulfilled and perhaps exceeded the lofty expectations placed upon him when he turned pro. A surprise main event opportunity against Jack Cullen last time out marked his departure from prospecthood and established him as a young contender as he thrashed Cullen inside four rounds. Pacheco is now ranked by all four sanctioning bodies at 168 and at 22 years of age is looking to get into the big money fights in a division that houses one of the sport's true cash cows in Canelo Alvarez. Tonight, he looks to justify his graduation into contention as he takes on the toughest test of his career.
Damas y caballeros, buenas noches y bienvenidos a Monterrey, Nuevo León, México. En vivo por The Zone para estelar combate de la noche. Ten rounds of boxing scheduled for the WBO International and USWBC Super Middleweight Championship. Presentado por Senor Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing in association with Box Stars. Sponsored by Bet Online and Stage Front. This bout is sanctioned under the auspices of the Boxing Commission of Monterrey, the President Jose Luis Lopez, the Commissioner Jorge Guerra, the World Boxing Council, Presidente Mauricio Suleiman, Supervisor Abraham Ibarra Valdez, and the World Boxing Organization, the President Francisco Pacolar Carcel, the Supervisor Rafael Lopez Santos. Introducing your three judges scoring this contest from ringside. Los tres jueces son Alejandro Camacho, Moises Melhem, and Abigail Sandoval. And at the sound of the belt, your third man in the ring, referee Sergio Hernandez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the stage is set and we are here. This is it. The time has come. I said the time has come. From the four corners of the world to the four corners of this ring right here in Monterrey, Nuevo Leo, Mexico, the fight starts now. Introducing first the challenger. He fights out of the blue corner and wears solid black trunks. He scaled the super middleweight limit of 168 pounds. Peso 178 libra. His professional record, 19 victories, one defeat with one draw. He has 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Presentando de los Mochis, Sinaloa, Mexico. Donas y caballeros, Manuel Hermeno. Gallegos! Gallegos! And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner. He wears the black and gold trim. He is the defending champion. He also scaled the super, win no, super middleweight limit of 168 pounds. His professional record, a perfect one. 18 fights, 18 victories, 15 of them coming by way of knockout. He fights out of South Central Los Angeles, California. Here is the reigning, defending, undefeated and hard-hitting WBC US and WBA International Super Middleweight Champion, Diego. Okay, guys, remember what the coach will be looking at. Please make a good team fight and make it the best of the night. Recuerden lo que platicamos con los vestidores. Vamos a hacer una pelea limpia. Obedezcan en todo momento mis órdenes. Choquen los guantes. Suerte a los dos. So it is time for our main event. A lot of hype around this man, Diego Pacheco, one of the top young contenders in the sport, just 22 years of age. And tonight, Manuel Gallegos try to erase that hype and stop the train that is Diego Pacheco. Round one. This one scheduled for 10. And Manuel Gallegos, at least visually, looks like he's in perhaps the best shape of his career. Much more defined than we've seen in recent fights. Diego Pacheco looks to be in excellent condition as well. Of course, working in that Benavidez camp. And Gabe, you've been in the gym with him in recent years. One of the goals of Jose Benavidez Sr. is kind of to toughen Diego up a little bit, to make him better on the inside. And one way to do that is to throw him in the ring with you and uh, David Benavidez once in a while. Yeah, yeah, we had some great sparring sessions. And obviously, he gets to spar with Benavidez, a great champion. And, uh, you know, you see, you see it in this frame, man. He's built different right now. From an early age, 
Pacheco described himself as a long-range power puncher. And Jose Benavidez has been trying to add elements of an inside game to Pacheco's repertoire as well. You know, Manuel Pacheco. Gallego is almost exclusively an inside fighter. Yeah, and Pacheco is the taller guy, but physically, physically you can see the Gallegos is uh, probably a little, a little bit stronger. His frame certainly a little thicker yeah. than Pacheco's. Gallegos has fought up at 175 out of necessity in the past as well. As Gallegos sneaks a nice left hook to the body there. It's a nice pivot by uh, Diego gets some range, popping a jab. It's really nice. Before the Van Sicklin fight, Gallegos was talking about you know, wanting to fight at long range a little bit more, but realistically, his identity, his DNA, it's pressure all the time. That's what works for Gallegos. He wants to apply pressure and basically make his opponents make a mistake so he can hurt them. Yeah, you know, nice, nice combination. Beautiful there. combination there from Pacheco as Gallegos tries to fire back with the right hand and comes up short. Great combination by Diego. And Gallego took those shots well. Took a nice uppercut from Pacheco there as well. A step back counter from Pacheco a moment ago. I like that jab. I like that jab. Nice Final jab. Ten nice seconds jab. Of the round here. Stiff jab from Pacheco as Gallego tries to work his way inside. Well, that was an excellent round. For Los Angeles' Diego Pacheco. La distancia está perfecta, pero no más no te confíes cuando te mueves para el lado, me bajas mucho la mano, güey. ¿Ok? Te mueves para la izquierda, güey. Mira, dúmeme a la izquierda, güey. Va muy bien, güey, va muy bien. Vaselina. Aquí la traigo, aquí la traigo. We take a look back at some it's of the work from Pacheco right in yeah. the opening round. It's nice, good range, stepping in, closing the distance. I like what I saw in that round by Diego. Nice, nice one two, finishing with the hook. Yeah, Diego's man, he got a he got a chin on him because he took some good shots. Round two begins. Yeah, it's certainly not unusual to see Gallegos taking shots like that. The conceit with Gallegos is that he's going to take them long enough to grind his opponent down. The question is if Pacheco is different in the way that he's being hyped, will Gallegos be able to withstand them for a full 10 rounds? See, what I'm curious to see is as the rounds go on, if they do go on, um, is if Diego stays disciplined with the game plan because Gallego's not going to stop coming forward, you know? So it's going to take a lot for Diego to stay disciplined and continue fighting with this range and jabbing and moving and boxing smart. It takes a lot of energy to fight that kind of fight. Nice body shot by Diego. Both men look for left hooks to the body there, but it was Pacheco's that got there first. Now it's a left hook up top as Gallegos sails a right hand over the top. See, Gallegos is the kind of guy, he'll take three to land one. So he's going to keep coming forward. Incredible to think that Gallegos turned pro at 140 pounds. He really grew out of the 160 pound division. That contributed or probably was the reason for his lone loss to El Russo Santoyo, he said that my legs were gone making 160. And you can see, this is not a man that should be making 160. This is a light heavyweight sized 168 pounder that is trying to wear Pacheco down, but is running in. There's some hot stuff here oh, in the nice early going. Right hand by Diego. See, I like, the, I like Diego to stay on an angle when, he, when his back's against the rope. You know, don't give him nothing free. Don't give Gallegos nothing, nothing free, you know. Get on the angle, protect yourself. I 
Or I guess that's the question here, Gabe. Is is, is that nice. a Pacheco. beautiful shot there for Pacheco? At some point, Gallegos is going to get on Pacheco's chest, likely. Yeah, exactly. So what does Diego do when that happens? Does he tie up or just give him angles? You know, you can tie up, give him angles, but you don't want to be squared up. If you got your, if you got the earmuffs on, and you're squared up, then you're giving them a lot of, a lot of room to land shots. So you want to be on an angle. Suck the chin behind the shoulder. See right there how Diego's then guy in that because Diego was on the angle. Nice body shot. Left uppercuts and body shots from Pacheco just raining in right now. Gallegos making this a physical fight as was the game plan, as is always the game plan for him. Under the tutelage of Cultural Montiel and the legendary Montiel family. Final moments of round two. That'll do it. Another good round for Diego Pacheco. Discover the new way to your new Mercedes Benz. No matter where or when you buy it, online or in store. Choose your car, and there's just one price. Plus, extended test drives are now available across our electric car range. Search Mercedes-Benz online showroom and book your electric extended test drive today. Round three underway. A couple of world-ranked super middleweights going at it here in our main event. Diego Pacheco and Manuel Gallegos. Corey Erdman and Gabe Rosado on the call for you here ringside. Always a pleasure to call the action here in Mexico. All of our broadcasts from here in Mexico basically have been bangers, and this has been no exception. See, Diego's doing nice little crafty things. You know, he's not allowing... Gallego is back into the ropes. He's using angles, nice little smart, nice little jabs, tapping him with the right hand. That was a good shot from Gallego a moment ago. You're right, Gabe. I think we're seeing a lot more nuance yeah. to Pacheco's game. And I think the hand speed. See right there, I like what he just did. Got right. away from the ropes and stay on the ropes and allow yeah, Gallegos to get uh, free shots. I think the hand speed of Pacheco seems to have moved up a tick as well. Nice right hand. Because he's picking shot. his shot smart. You know, he's not trying to get a knock. He's not he's not forcing a knockout. He's landing shots, picking his spots. Right, he wants a knockout, but he's not forcing it. Gallegos trying to get to work on the inside here. This is where all of his work is going to have to occur. See, and that's is, a nice combination. This is what I don't want to see. I don't want to see him giving up free shots. See right there, get back to that jab. More head movement here from Gallegos as he tries to sort of swim his way to the inside. Might have been emboldened by that combination of the ropes. And he walked right into an uppercut there. Gallegos trying to force a firefight. Pacheco allowing him to get off on the ropes momentarily. See, I, I know what Pacheco's doing when he, when he gets his back against the rope and he has the guard up. He's trying to create a hole, an opportunity to land a counter, but you know he can do that off the, off the, off the side angle. Nice hook, nice hook. I think that's the shot he's looking for there, Gabe, but you're right, he is absorbing shots to get that off. Jab to the stomach. Big nice right overhand hand. right there for Pacheco. Nice right hand. That jab to the bodies will set up that right hand. Diego has absorbed some colossal shots I, already. I want to see, Die see Diego do that again. Jab to the body, set up that right to the top. A lot of fighters.
Warriors early in Pacheco's career would have gone down from some of those shots, but Gallegos, he's taking them, and he's not even blinking. But he walked he walked back a bit wobbly oh, right yeah. there. He's a bit wobbly. <laughs> Nice one, too. Hook to the body. Took a shot up top, but he, he landed a good 45 to the body. Mm. Nice feint. So what Diego did right there is he looked down to the body. Had Gallegos thinking he was going to throw a body shot and came up top. Gabe, if you're in Pacheco's position right now, through a couple of rounds, you've landed all of your best stuff, and the guy is still standing right there. Are you feeling confident heading into this round, or are you starting to wonder, like, oh, is he going to go somewhere? You know, the whole thing is stay disciplined. Stay disciplined, stay locked in. Gallegos is ready to go. Trust me, man. He's, he's, he's getting hit with some big shots, and Diego's starting to sense it. You see him right here. He's sitting on his shots. He's not backing up. Gallegos basically sprinted across the ring to start round four. But he's sprinting right into some heavy shots from Pacheco once again. Pacheco with that ramrod jab circling around Gallegos here in the fourth round. Continuing to absorb them, continuing to march forward. Diego needs to go back down to the body. Diego's carrying his head slow, a lot of upper body movement. There goes Pacheco downstairs. Yeah, the body shot's gonna do it. You know, he's hitting this guy with some great shots up top. But he needs to sit down to that left hook to the body. Nice body shot. Oh, just stabbing with that jab downstairs. Be thinking about that right uppercut. Not too many of them have missed when Pacheco is throwing nice it, both with the right hand and the left. Nice jab. Just picking at it. Gallegos, for the first time, and maybe a sign there, Gabe, gets to the inside but just holds on. Maybe he's in need of a little bit of a reprieve. Yeah, those shots are breaking him down little by little. Nice body shot. That's what I want to see more of. That left him to the body. You can hear that one. Nice. Oh. Nice. A lot on the that face of Gallegos, but it's the shot to the body that sinks him to the canvas. That body shot, you know, you can take it to the head, man, but the body is different. Boy, Gallegos up at the count of five with a mean look on his face, but you have to wonder how much more oh, of this can he absorb? Big shots. Pacheco all over him. And the referee jumps great, in and great, that is great stoppage. It. Diego Pacheco continues yeah. to live up to the hype. And he's getting better, man. He's getting better. Every fight, he's getting better. He's improving. I like what I saw. And you know, he was throwing some big head shots, but he went downstairs, he didn't forget to go to the body, and he got the job done. Well, that was scary power and accuracy from Diego Pacheco. And Gabe, I don't know too many fighters, you know, in and around the age of Diego Pacheco that have made the kinds of improvements that he's made over the last four fights or so. Remember, we, we caught one of his fights here in Mexico when he won, but he got rocked by a journeyman in that fight. Yeah. And now, four fights later, he looks like an entirely different athlete in there in terms of his body composition, in terms of how he's throwing his punches, just a whole new fight. Absolutely, he's showing that he's dedicated and that he's really taking his craft serious. But not only that is he has a, a great trainer in his corner, Benavides, 
and he has a good camp with him. You know, sparring guys like Benavides and, and things like that, man. So he's improving. He's, he's around a great circle of fighters and great minds, and he's learning a lot. I think what we've seen is that that Benavidez camp has taken what Pacheco is naturally good at and his natural tools, his length, what he yes. did instinctively, and they've added a little bit of an edge to him. And we yes. saw that here tonight. There was an instinct that he was searching for that knockout from start to finish. Yes. So props to Benavidez and his team. And uh, Diego looked great. And you know, Diego took some shots, but he showed that he got a chin. And you have to have a chin to be a champion. And he showed that he can take a shot. He took shots from you don't, you don't want to take too many, but when you do take a shot, you want to show that you have a chin, and, and he showed that. Let's take a look back at how this one ended here, Gabe. Just great combinations. That jab, sticking that jab out, breaking the rhythm. The jab was the key to the fight. Left hook to the liver. Great, great shot. Right there, he's just waiting, timing him. Nice. See, that right hand was a decoy shot. He didn't put nothing on that right hand. That right hand was just to kind of distract Gallegos and throw that left hook to the body right on the money. You see the smile on the face of Pacheco as he landed that and pointed right to his corner. Man. You know, I love to see a young fighter improving and really learning and taking his craft serious. And that's what you see with Pacheco. On well, the 168-pound division, he's going to have this man to deal with. And it might be a little bit sooner than we expected. The 22-year-old Diego Pacheco with another explosive knockout performance as we get one more look at the ending of this one. And I love the pace that he's moving, you know. I love the fights that they're matching him up with. Each fight is a tougher fight, and he's he's answering the question that he's, he's, that, he's that real deal. He's a real fighter. Uh -oh, it is time to make this one official. Let's send it up to our MC, Mr. David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Miguel Calu calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, two minutes and 45 seconds of round number four. Declaring your winner by TKO. He's still undefeated and still the WBO International and USWBC Super Middleweight Champion, Diego Pacheco. The second straight fourth round stoppage victory for Diego Pacheco. Didn't take long for him to break Gallegos down. And you saw the, the knowing look of approval from Manuel Gallegos. And again, to, to put this into perspective, this is a big, tough, rugged fighter who is known for his ability to absorb shots. We saw him take some colossal stuff from Richard Van Sicklin last time out. But we wondered, is the power of Diego Pacheco different? Certainly looked like it in the ringers tonight. Absolutely. You know, Gallegos came rough, rugged. You know, nothing special, but he's mean. And he's coming forward. And, you know, he didn't break Diego's will. Diego stood, you know, he stuck to the game plan. Great jab, great body work, and I love what I saw. Diego Pacheco now 19 and 0. What a moment for him. Headlining here in Mexico, his second headline performance. Second headline performance here on DAZN. And he looked like.